Hello and welcome to this first colour correction tutorial for Premiere Pro. And for this first tutorial I'm simply going to look at the issue of brightness and contrast. When you have a shot you might think well we could really do with adjusting the brightness or the contrast of this shot and then you go to the effects and you pick out the most obvious tool. So let's go to our video effects, let's pull this up and go to our effects tab, make sure that's highlighted and go down to video effects open up and go down to the color correction section open up color correction and right at the top of the list you have brightness and contrast so the first thing you think you want to do is grab hold of brightness and contrast and drop it on your clip and then start adjusting brightness and contrast with these two values here well if you're tempted to do that can I tell you that what you really need to do is slap your wrist very firmly and hard because you do not use this very old control for doing brightness and contrast. It's still there because people do use it, but it damages your shot in a way that other tools will not. So if you want to use brightness and contrast, slap your wrist, and I can show you why. I've actually got a little sequence down here called brightness and contrast, and in it I have a PNG image, which I did not make myself. I got it from this guy's website from a guy called Dave Chalmers. It's homepage.mac.com Dave Chalmers. I've even stolen the same title, Adjusting Brightness and Contrast, the proper way, although Dave is actually looking for uh, video screens, whereas we're looking at video. And he has this contrast chart that I downloaded as a ping and got it from there. So thank you, Dave, for the title and for the image which I'm using and obviously is available to you if you want to be able to download it yourselves. Now, I've brought that into a sequence which I've made the right size. And I'm now going to drag the brightness and contrast effect onto this image. So I click and hold it and drag it and drop it on the image, like that. And so it's now applied to my effects controls up here. If you can't see effects control, it's ganged up here with the source monitor and the audio mixer. So there it is. And we can open up brightness and contrast. And we can actually open up the two sliders. Now, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to open up another window. A window that's called a reference monitor. And on the reference monitor, we can have the original screen over here so we can see what's happening. But the reference monitor, we can put side by side, will show us on a graph exactly what's happening. So I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to go all the way down to what's called Reference Monitor. Click on Reference Monitor, and I get this floating window, which I can resize as necessary. I'm just going to resize it a little, so that I can still get to my controls. Now... What have I got? I've got all these different bars. I've got from pure white to pure black and all the different grayscales in between. And those are shown, each individual bar, as a little line on this screen, going from white to black, okay, all the way in between. So you've got your two layers going from one direction to the other. That's why we've got this lovely X pattern. And we've got a medium gray, which is this medium gray, pretty much in the middle. Okay, so that's what that line in the middle is. Now, if I start to adjust brightness to brighten the shot up, what's going to happen is I am going to crush my whites. So as I start to pull it across to brighten the image up, I start to lose, firstly, any identification between what's white and the next layer. It starts to become all white, and as you can see on my graph, I have crushed my whites. So I'm losing all of this detail. All of this area is just turning into pure white, and the dynamic range or the color range or the contrast range of this shot is being squashed and squeezed. And as you can see, look at my pure blacks. They're not pure black anymore. I've pulled up the contrast and the blacks have not remained black, but actually they've gone up to, well, we're almost at mid-gray there. In fact, you could probably pull them all the way up to mid-gray. So what I've done is I've lost my range, I've crushed it, everything's been crushed and it looks awful. I'm going to reset that back to how it should be so that my pure blacks are pure black, my pure whites are pure white, and then I'm going to start playing with the contrast. So if I now pull the contrast up, yes, I've got a dynamic range in the middle, but look, I'm crushing my whites and I'm crushing my blacks. My range is being significantly reduced, and if I keep going, you'll see that you end up just with, well, two colours, black and white. So you're reducing the range. You're not having any of your grayscale, it's all disappearing, and you are crushing and removing detail from your shot. So that's why you don't want to use brightness and contrast, and if you're tempted to use it, give your wrist a firm slap and say, no, I'm not going to use that. We're going to use better tools that keep us a wide dynamic range and don't crush out the blacks and don't crush out the whites and give me a really good shot. So what tools should I use? Well, there are actually a number that achieve the same thing. 
I'm just going to show you one. I'm going to delete this one. So select brightness and contrast and hit the delete button to get rid of it. I'm going to show you a tool that we're going to be using in this tutorial and also in the next tutorial which is great for dealing with simple colour problems and also excellent for dealing with this dynamic range issue that we've been talking about and that is the fast colour corrector. So scroll down your colour correction tab until you see something called the fast colour corrector and if you struggle to find it you can always type the name of the effect in this box here. So if I start typing fast, F-A-S-T and I just scroll up to see what's in there and you'll see that I've got some presets but also I've got under color correction the fast color corrector and that's what I want to use. So I'm going to take out the fast color corrector and I'm going to drop it on the clip. The other effect that you can use that I'm not going to demonstrate today would be curves. Curves could achieve a similar sort of thing but that's perhaps for another more advanced tutorial. Okay so at the moment we've still got our graph We've got our ranges of from pure white to pure black, two lines going one direction and one the other. Now we've got the fast color corrector and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to actually expand it so you can see the whole thing. Now if you click this little show hide icon up here, it takes it out to the full width. You might have it like that and you want to reduce it. So it's just show the full width or don't show the full width, that's all it is. But I'm going to go the full width and I'm going to scroll down until I see these bars here. One says input levels. The other says output levels and we're going to be playing around with the input levels. Now let me just explain what you're seeing here. This is the area that is pure black. This is the area that is pure white and this is everything in the middle. Now if I start to pull this slider, the pure black slider, to the right, I am saying that every pixel that's darker than this level has got to be crushed to pure black and you can see that I've started to crush to pure black and I'm starting to pull it down here so I pull it a bit more you'll see that effect I'm crushing things to pure black but notice pure whites remain they've not been changed however if I wanted to crush my pure whites I could pull this white fader down and I'm saying that every pixel that is this brightness or higher must be pure white and you can see that I've got pure white turning up and I'm beginning to crush my whites although I am still maintaining a full dynamic range. Now I'm going to put those right back. So I'm saying only the darkest pixels are pure black, only the whitest pixels are pure white, so I've still got my full range. And in the middle I have what's called a gamma slider. And basically gamma is saying it's everything that isn't pure black and everything that isn't pure white. So it's the whole range in between. And actually you can slide the gamma slider and never get to pure black, never get to pure white but you can adjust the brightness and the contrast of the shot. So if I pull it this way, I'm going to brighten the shot up, but look, I've still got pure blacks, I've still got pure whites. There are my pure whites, I've still got a gradient between the two, there are my pure blacks. If I pull it the other way, I'm making everything a lot darker, and I've still got, although you can't really see it unless I make this, this curve really big, I've actually got an exponential curve. Never gets to pure black apart from what is pure black there is actually a visible difference, I don't know if you can see it on your video screen, but there is a visual difference between this bar and this bar. So I've maintained a full dynamic range and I've affected the brightness and contrast. This in other programs is often known as the levels control. You find levels in Photoshop and in After Effects and in many of the other programs. Well, it's actually found in this fast color corrector, levels. Now the output levels at the bottom shouldn't be confused with the input levels. The input levels are looking at the actual image and making sure that everything below a certain value is pure black, everything above a certain value is pure white, and we're adjusting the contrast, if you like, the brightness and the contrast with this slider, this gamma slider in the middle. However, the bottom slider, which is called output levels, is about what are legal limits for the broadcast system that you're working in. Now sometimes it won't take the full range of the image that you've got and you need to pull these in a bit and say okay you've got to consider everything below 16 is pure black because TVs aren't going to cope with pure black it's just need to look at 16 and below is going to be hit black and say 235 at the top end might be an appropriate range for a TV screen. So therefore we're actually saying we've mapped this whatever's pure white here in our image on output will be taken to in this case 234.9 and everything that's pure black on our image will be output to 16 so that I've got a safe range for broadcast. 
but that is just for output so it's going to crush the color range but we can still keep the full range of the image in our production but then make sure that when we output it it matches the system that we are outputting to but I'm not going to play with those okay so let's have a look at a clip and see how it works in effect right I've got one here that says arrive and if I just move through this arrive we've got somebody coming to a door can unlock the door open the door open the shop and go in okay so that's what this clip is and the, and the image I've got here is showing the full dynamic range of all the different luminance values there are in this shot so some areas are very bright we might be looking over here at these white air, whiter areas might be represented here this area would represent this bright wall here and then the darker areas might be seen here so we've got a luma range of what's actually going on in the shot now at the moment I've got brightness and contrast put onto this shot if I start to move the brightness and contrast let's just move this over here so we can see the two side by side as I start to brighten the shot up I'm shifting everything up and I'm crushing my dynamic range all my blacks are disappearing as I start to pull it up you see I'm pulling them up and I'm, I'm everything's getting squashed at the top as I start to push brightness so I'm not got a wide dynamic range I'm just squashing everything to make it brighter and as I increase contrast you'll see that I'm effectively going to start crushing the top and the bottom so the tops are beginning to crush out already and the bottoms are beginning to crush out and I'm just sort of going to lose the detail and everything's either going to be completely white or completely black and it's not really going to work for us so we don't want to use brightness and contrast I'm just going to turn that off and we're going to pull the fast color corrector onto this shot pull on fast color corrector and drop it on and then we're going to open up the fast color corrector and we're going to go down to our levels and now we're just going to play with the gamma so what we actually need to do with this particular shot is we actually need to darken it a bit so I can pull it down to darken it to increase the contrast and you'll see that we've still got a wide dynamic range so we've got some full whites and we've got some good darks but we've also got a wide dynamic range of brightnesses throughout the shot we haven't damaged it and we've created a very good result without resorting to that horrible brightness and contrast so we've gone from let me just turn this effect on and off so we've gone from that to that I'm going to move up the reference monitor here so we can see the difference so we've gone from that and we've decided to add contrast in by pulling that gamma slider down to that we've still got a very wide dynamic range we haven't crushed any of our whites we haven't crushed any of our blacks and we've got a very good result so don't go for brightness and contrast make sure you go for the fast color corrector and then scroll down and look for these two bars and it's the input levels everything below this is pure black everything above here is pure white and this is your gamma slider which is adjusting the grays in the middle I'm Andrew Davis. I hope you found this useful thank you for watching mm -hmm.